Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and our lesson is about the point-slope form of a line. The point-slope form of a line basically gives to us the equation here that can show us a point, x1, y1, and the slope, m. So again, x1 here and y1 here, that's the point, a point that lies on that line, and m would be the slope of that line. So if we're given the equation y plus 3 equals 1 fifth of x minus 2, what is the slope and a point that's on this line? Well, we know that the slope is going to be labeled by the letter m. All right, so our slope in this case is right here, and that is one fifth. So we can label that slope equals one fifth. Now I've given us a bit of a trick question here with the with finding the point that's on there. Our point, and I'm going to label that in green, would be x one, y one. All right, that's our point. But we have to remember that it's x minus x one and y minus y one. So let's look here. This is x minus x1. So that means that the value of x1, or the value of x, is 2, all right? Because it's x minus 2. Now this one over here, this is where the trick comes in. What if it says y plus 3? We can rewrite that as y minus negative 3, right? And then it's more in this form, y minus y1. So whenever you see a plus here, our y value is actually going to be negative. So the point would be negative 3. Because we, would, we wouldn't write this in as y minus negative 3. We just write it as y plus 3. So in other words, you can look at this number, including the sign, and take the opposite each time. So if it's y plus 3, it would be negative 3. x minus 2, it will be positive 2. Or you can figure it out as, as a subtraction question, y minus negative 3 if you want. But it's probably easier to just look at that in the future and just say, including the sign, what's the opposite? The opposite will be our y value. The opposite of negative 2 will be our x value. So there's a point that's on this line, 2, negative 3, and the slope of this line is 1 over 5. Now, in this question, we're asked to kind of go the other direction, where we're write the equation of a line that passes through the point 5, negative 2, and as the slope of 3. We've got our equation up there, so we're going to go ahead and, and write this out. Y minus y1 is equal to the slope times x minus x1. And our point, or our slope, I guess, we'll do our slope first. Our slope is negative 3. We're just going to plug that into our equation. Our equal sign is going to stay the same. x is going to stay the same. y is going to stay the same. Now we're going to substitute the point 5, 2 in here for x and for y. So our value 5 will go in for x1. So it will become x minus 5. Again, the equation has x minus x1. So if it's a positive number, we'll just write it in as x minus 5. The trick, again, on the y section here is that our y value is negative 2. So we're going to put in the opposite of our y value, the opposite of negative 2. So again, in this case, we would have plus 2. And that would be the equation of the line that passes through the point 5, negative 2, and has a slope of, oops, negative 3. There we go. Let's get the slope proper there. OK, our slope is negative 3. All right, this one here, we're asked to actually graph the line. So let's go ahead and graph the line. It's, it's actually pretty easy to graph a line when you're given this equation because you know you have a point given by our x and y values, and you have a slope, in this case, a slope of 1 fifth. So let's write down the information that we do know. 
slope is equal to one fifth. That's a positive rise over run. And then our x x value over here is the opposite of negative two, or in other words, positive two. And the opposite of positive three, which would be negative three. All right. Again, you'll see this over and over and over. And whenever you see y plus three with this type of equation, the equation saying it's taking away or subtracting or the opposite of the y value. So the opposite of positive three will give us our negative three. So let's first start out by graphing that point. The point is two negative three, so that's going to be a point right about here on our graph. Okay, the point two negative three, maybe down a little bit more from there, but it's pretty close there. Now our slope is one fifth. Remember our slope is a rise over the run, so we're going to go rise up one. So let's go ahead and do that. We rise up one, and then we go forward one, two, three, four, five. Rise and run. So we will go to the point one, two, three, four, five, right there. And that is that will help us to show a second point on this graph. Now, if we had space, we could go up one more and then five more that way. Or we could go the opposite of both of that. We could go down one and to the left five and put in another point. So we're going to go ahead and, and do that as well. We'll go down one and then negative five, one, two, three, four, five, to the point right there. And these are all collinear points, so we can um, go ahead and graph the line that would go straight through those points. And there it is. And of course, because it's a line, what we're going to do is add arrows on both ends, meaning that the line is going to extend infinitely in both directions. So if we're asked to graph an equation, we're given the equation in point-slope form. What we're going to do is graph the point that we know, in this case 2, negative 3, and then use the slope, rise over run, to go to our second point, and possibly a third point. It's best to have three points when we're graphing a line. And that's how we would go ahead and graph it using the information that's there. All right. Next one, if we're given a graph and we're asked, what is the equation of this line in point-slope form? So what do we need to find? We need to find the slope of this line, and we also need to find a point, an xy point. Now, w what we have on this is no points are labeled on this graph at all, but we can see the intercepts pretty clearly. So we can pick either intercept. I'm going to pick the x-intercept and go ahead and label that point. That's the point negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 5, 0. So that's going to be my point, negative 5, 0. And my slope, to find the slope, I need to have two points on the graph. So I do have a second point here, 0, negative 3. And that's the second point that I have on this graph. I can either use the slope equation, which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 to find the slope, or I can look, how much does it change from my first point to my second point, all right? And when I'm given a graph, I like to look at it that way because it kind of makes more sense to me. How much does it change? Well, it goes down 3, so it changes negative 3. And then it goes forward. 5. So that changes a positive 5. So if I'm going to write the rise, or how much it changes up and down over the run, I would write it changes negative 3 over 5. That is my slope. And so I've got a point, and I've got my slope, so I can go ahead and write this equation. y minus the y value of 0 is equal to our slope negative 3 over 5 times x minus our x value, and we're saying x minus negative 5, or in other words, the opposite of negative 5, so it's going to be positive 5. 
I could rewrite that just simply as y is equal to negative 3 over 5 times x plus 5. All right, and the way I, the reason I rewrite that is because you wouldn't normally write y minus 0. All right, so that would be our equation in point slope form of this line, and those are the steps for finding it. Again, find the slope, find a point on the line, and then using two points, you can find the slope either using the equation or looking at the rise over the run. All right, so just a quick recap. This is the point slope form of a line right here. Y minus Y1 is equal to the slope times X minus X1, and that gives us the value of a point, X1, Y1, and slope of M.